Good day. Something a little different today. I was uh, asked if I could do a bit of, um, well, passivating is the slang term for it, but uh, uh, do some some post world treatment on some stainless steel, uh, which I did. That's something you don't hear much about uh, very often. So I thought I'll do a bit of a, a piece on this because it's. Uh, uh, could be useful for for people either for their own projects or just to know what uh, what people are talking about when they when they talk about it. For a start, there are two things I, I, I talked earlier about passivation. Um, strictly speaking, passivation is taking stainless steel parts that are um, you know typically they've been machined or something like that, and uh, dipping them in an acid solution. And I can't remember what it is at the moment, but it's a it's an acid solution. I think it's hydrochloric. Uh, but what that does is it helps regrow the oxide film on the outside of the stainless steel. Now, um, I've never really thought it's, it's been particularly useful because stainless will grow its own oxide film uh, anyway. Uh, so to uh, dip it in acid to give it a head start, mm, of marginal utility. The other uh, operation we do to stainless steel is to remove free iron from the surface. When it gets welded, um, some of the iron in the in the stainless, because it's a steel, it's got the, it has got some iron in it, can uh, you know float to the surface of the whirlpool and hang around on the surface. So if it gets into a into a corrosive environment, that iron will rust, um, even though the rest of the stainless steel doesn't necessarily do so. But it'll it'll stain and look unsightly and all that sort of thing. So. What you do is you're using an acid solution, you remove that free iron. So it, it restores the, um, the oxide layer, takes the iron out, everything's wonderful. Two ways to do that. The one that's traditionally done in industry is using a pickling solution, which is a mixture of um, hydrofluoric and hydrochloric acid. Uh, it's nasty stuff. Hydrofluoric acid has a great affinity for um, calcium, so your bones. And so if you get it spilt on you, uh, that, that will start dissolving your bones. Now you won't feel it because it also does your nerves for you too. Um, so it's one of those things that if you're using that stuff, you really do need to have the gloves and the apron and the boots and the, the, the goggles and the face shield and all that sort of thing. Because if it gets on you, uh, you're on strife. However, there is another way of doing it. And that's, uh, it's an electrochemical process. Uh, and that's what I'm doing today. Uh, uses a mixture of um, uh, phosphoric acid and citric acid, so nicer acids, not necessarily all that wonderful, but they're still um, better than hydrofluoric. And using an electric circuit, you are basically doing electrolysis and you're taking the iron out with electrolysis. Uh, it's quite effective, it's reasonably quick, and so uh, it's, it's something that's um, uh, well within the means of the of the home workshop. So I bought a, a kit from a company in Queensland um, Retropole is the name of the thing and um, That's it's it's relatively simple to apply it. Um, you know, you can they'll, they'll sell your brushes and all the bits and pieces you just connect it to the uh, uh, the output of your welder, you don't need much, you know, you know, five amps or so something like that. You could probably even use a, a battery charger if you've got uh, desperate um, and um, you know that's uh, that's enough to to um, electro polish uh, is the term the uh, the surface and it takes off not only does it take off the, uh, the 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 free iron and all that sort of thing restores the 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 oxide barrier but what it'll also do is take off the oxide uh, of on the on the stainless uh, when you weld you get you've got a molten whirlpool but you've also got um, bits that don't get molten but get up to a couple of hundred degrees and they take on those colors uh, and so this will actually remove that you can do that with a wire brush uh, that's all fine but uh, this this will remove that as well this is a test piece that i've just whipped up um, please uh, apologies for the dodgy worlds and the poor fit up uh, but it's really just to show what happens when um, a piece of stainless that's been welded uh, is treated in certain ways. So I've got a W stamped on here, so I'm going to be putting these in some water. Over this side I've got to P, um, 
for electro polishing so I'm going to be polishing these two worlds uh, with my electro polishing thing these two are going to stay just as they are which has just been brushed on this side uh, I'm not even going to brush them I'm just going to electro polish the ones on this side here so we'll see what happens uh, worth noting too here that a couple of these worlds which one which one this one uh, and well that's the same one and I think this one here was also showing signs of, signs of cracking so um, something doesn't like being welded uh, this, this is uh, or just some sheet stainless I, I found so it could well be just that this is one of those grades that does not like being welded unless under certain conditions or it could just be that um, oh, there's another crack there uh, I'm a, I'm a um, not a terribly good uh, stainless welder but we'll see how we go with this one this is the setup I'm using for my uh, electro polishing I've got a, a small I think it's a 130 amp um, welder it actually welds quite nicely it's it's basically a stick set with a lift art TIG on it but I'm using that on its lowest setting uh, this is the stuff that I use from uh, Retropol um, they are up in Queensland I believe and as you can see or possibly see from the label down there it's uh, phosphoric acid and citric acid now they're still acids so I'm going to be wearing gloves and uh, I've got my safety glasses on and all that sort of thing. The way it's all set up is that um, you've got one electrode here and a brush which gets um, rubbed over the, the part uh, and the other is collected, uh, connected electrically and so it's going to sputter and fizz and produce some more interesting sort of fumes but uh, that's basically meant to uh, electro clean the, the uh, um, stainless off. After doing the uh, electro polishing, uh, there's a neutralizer solution which uh, you can use. Uh, it's, it's mainly sodium bicarbonate with some surfactants, so detergents and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's just to uh, neutralize the acid and uh, clean off the surface a bit. So you can see here, uh, I've poured a bit of that on. It needs a bit of a wash, but it's um, gone a, a uniform sort of, uh, what would you call, matte, matte sort of color. Uh, you know, looks looks quite reasonable. Didn't take long at all, as you as you saw that um, bit of application was uh, was real time. Um, but uh, I'll give this a bit of a, a wash and a scrub, and then I'll put it in some uh, water uh, for some time, uh, probably overnight and maybe even longer. Uh, and uh, we'll just see, you know, how that all works. Here's my sample piece. It's been sitting in a tub of, of water overnight with a pinch of salt added just to, to, to liven things up. Uh, this is the passivated side uh, and as you can see on the side that I didn't brush um, the, uh, uh, the, the passivated dry and the passivated wet look very similar. On the side that uh, wasn't passivated, um, well difficult to tell but this has got a little bit of shine to it and this, this hasn't so I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that this is you know, starting to corrode and interestingly down in the corner there which you probably can't see there's a little bit of a rust stain 
On the other side, where I gave the, them a wire brushing before uh, the passivation, um, once again the passivated side is is showing you know no signs of, of rust staining or anything like that. However, the the um, and and the dry brushed doesn't look too much different, but the wet brushed you can see there's a bit of of staining there from from rust coming through. So, you know from that I I, I conclude that well yes actually it does do something. Um, if you're working in a if if your stainless welding is going into a dry environment, then you can probably get away with um, just brushing, and that'll remove the the oxide discoloration. Uh, still leaves the iron on the surface, but if you're going into um, a wet environment, and bear in mind that 316 stainless and and a number of them don't like continuous immersion, you've got to have some special grades for that. But if it's something like a um, you know, you're repairing a, a kitchen utensil or it's something for a, for a wet area like a shower or a laundry, um, just brushing, you're, you're just as likely to get some rust staining coming up. So you really do want to do a little bit of um, uh, passivating. Uh, on the, I, I think that you know, if I was to leave this in for a week, I'd probably find that this is this is uh, gets steadily worse, um, and these ones will probably stay about the same. But uh, there you go. That's the. That's the electro polishing experiment. Um, interesting to, to, to see what the results are. I uh, hope that's uh, been interesting to you and uh, we'll see you for the next one.